Many thanks for staying with us here on News Desk. We can move on and do a few more stories now. And former AIDS ambassador Jijo Yawavi Mensa has revealed she publicly denied her HIV positive status because her children were being ridiculed in school. In an open letter to President John Mahama, the controversial former AIDS ambassador explains that the love for her children and fear for the future concerning HIV-related stigma compelled her to publicly deny her HIV status. Uh, Jomesa is meanwhile asking for compensation for a five-year service to the U.S. Commission before her contract was terminated. Joining me in studio with more on this is my colleague Sinam Nto, uh, who joins me now in studio. So Sinam, uh, hi, thanks for joining us. So tell us uh, what really Mrs. Mes I mean, Jijo Mensa talks about in this open letter to the president. Okay, so before I go into her statements, um, you remember there was this movie about her life, how she contracted the HIV, how she was stigmatized and all that. And um, later on, we just, we were just shocked by her statement that she was no longer HIV positive. Everybody was surprised, I mean shocked. And so, well, now she's saying that she is HIV positive. And in her statement, as she already said, that um, it was because of the love of her son and also for the future, uh, fear of the future concerning the stigmatization. And she's also uh, requesting for compensation from President Mahama. Okay, so, so let's talk about the love for her son, which she says was one of the reasons. Why does she cite any instance where her son was... Or any, is there any such thing in this letter? Um, she didn't explicitly say anything like that, but all she said was that when her son goes to school, he's ridiculed and um, he, she can't take that um, pain anymore from her son. And her son is also saying that he doesn't want to go to school anymore. And that... Uh, Asked, I mean, informed her to uh, retract that status that she is positive. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're again saying that she's requesting for compensation. Co compensation for what? Apparently, her contract is supposed to be five years, and after the five years, uh, you're supposed to be given a compensation. And she also was given a house, and that one has also been taken away from her. But in a statement by the Ghana AIDS Commission. They're saying that her contract was abrogated on the 12th of November, 2012. So that means she only spent one year in that contract, not five years. So that five years is uh, a little, um, I, don't, I, I think it's been missed. The actual thing is she's worked officially for one year and then the other ones were uh, unofficial because she didn't officially tell them that she has accepted the termination of the contract. I see. So uh, is this the response from government? We were told there was a response from government or so. Yes. This is the response from government? Yes. Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, well, thank you very much for that update. And uh, that was my colleague, Senator Minto, bringing us a lot more on uh, that particular statement. Uh, by Jijo Mensa, that uh, ambassador, former ambassador, former ACE ambassador, I must say, uh, who at a point said, well, she was HIV positive and then retracted it. And now we are being told, she says, she decided to uh, retract that particular statement early on because her, ch her children were being ridiculed in school. We'll bring you a lot more on this as well in other bulletins. But uh, moving on now, and it has emerged that more prison officers are dying at an alarming rate due to the deplorable and unhygienic conditions in prisons across the country. Now, have been provided yet. Director General of Prisons, Matilda Bafuewa, says it is a disturbing event. Now, addressing prison officers at the Anchor 4 Maximum Prisons as part of a nationwide tour of the prisons, the prisons board said because of the number of hours officers spend in the prisons until they retire, they often pick diseases which eventually kill them. Because prisons do not have the kind of funding that is needed to turn things around, we still continue to work in very dilapidated buildings, which is not good for us. Some of the side effects of this congestion, poor sanitation, and dilapidated buildings is the uh, health effects. You see that prison, uh, officers are dying very young. In fact, officers are dying more rapidly than the prisoners. Because prisoners spend a shorter period, apart from the 197 people and all that, some can be three months, they go away one year, two years, three years. The average stay of an officer in prison is about 30 years. 
So you can imagine, even within the 30 years, you are only serving in the prison environment. And the prison environment is full of diseases and infections. You won't live to be the 60 years that we should see you off. So the poor infrastructure situation is a big concern. And that was the Director General of uh, Prisons, Matilda Bafuewa. Uh, the prisons board was also added that officers who smuggled contraband goods into the prison or the inmates will be sacked when found. Contraband means contraband. Anything which is not allowed by the OIC is a contraband. Even if you are taking a pen and the pen is not approved by the OIC, it is what? Exactly. Because at, ev at every given time, you should know what is entering the prison. And he is the person who has been put there. So it's assumed that he knows that whatever is entering the prison is not harmful to the security or to the welfare of the prison. So if you do what is not authorized by him, it becomes illegal and you can be sacked. Most of the time, when I sit down to give sanctions to prisoners, do you know how, to officers, do you know how I feel? I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a mother. I see all of you as my children. But it's difficult to say dismissed or say reduced. I don't enjoy it. But then these things have to be done to keep the service going. Let's go to the northern region now, where we're told the body of an unidentified lady believed to be in her mid-20s has been found in a house near the Bollip Market. Let's get some more on this from Richard Fogo, who is a journalist with Yagbon Radio in the Northern Region. Uh, Richard, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Now, uh, tell us more about this story. Uh, what do we know, for instance, about uh, the lady in question? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. One of the things that we met today, uh, afternoon, uh, the body of this found dead uh, in the room where uh, she was staying with some... Uh, Business school students. So what happens is that uh, some students who come from communities uh, come to Bali to attend uh, other JSS or family schools. And this lady, according to the family, uh, stays uh, down south and has come home for the uh, Christmas uh, holidays. And they even thought she had returned, not knowing she came and ended up in Bali with these other uh, younger girls who were uh, JSS students. So over the weekend, the Students actually went home leaving this lady alone. According to a uh, co tenant, uh, later in the, uh, you saw her in the morning and that she was fine. Then later in the afternoon, uh, when some of the children in the house went into the room to play, they found that she was lying uh, down there uh, unconscious and they ran out to tell the elderly people. They went inside and checked and found out that she was dead. Now, uh, when police got the scene, they, 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 they realized that, that she had blood. Uh, Injing over her. So, so it is are that the lady might have been uh, involved in some unsafe uh, abortion, according to uh, the housemates and then also the family who came to pick the body. Uh, the unfortunate thing that happened was that the police wanted to send the body to the uh, district hospital where an autopsy will be conducted. But uh, the family uh, uh, had a session with the police and came to an agreement, and the body was released to the family without that autopsy. And the police said they will be able to carry on with their investigation uh, after that. So at the moment, uh, yesterday, after the time we left uh, the scene, the police had released the body to the family to go to the village for barriers. Many thanks for that particular update, Richard Fogo, who is with Yagbon Radio in the Northern Region, bringing us a lot more on that particular story. I told it was a situation of an unsafe abortion. You're still watching this here on your Join News channel on Multi TV. Time now for business when we return from this break. <laughs>